in the last video, I said that stories help you achieve your speech goals in five ways. You can read them on this slide now. We looked at the first two in the last video. Let's start by looking at the third benefit of the stories, which is stories are easy to remember. It's been proven that as compared to data and text, the stories are easier to remember. But why? To understand that, let's listen to a clip from a TED Talk titled, Why Stories Are Important for Leaders. The speaker is Karen Eber, an author and a speaking coach. When you listen to a story, your entire brain starts to light up. Each of your lobes will light up as your senses and your emotions are engaged. As I talk about a phone falling and hitting the ground with a thud, your occipital and your temporal lobes are lighting up as though you were actually seeing that fall phone and hearing it hit with a thud. There's this term, neural coupling, which says, as the listener, your brain will light up exactly as mine, as the storyteller. It mirrors this activity as though you are actually experiencing these things. Storytelling gives you this artificial reality. Great. Let me now tell you a couple of stories to explain this point further. So the gentleman on the screen is Tony Shea. Unfortunately, he passed away in 2020. But before that, he created this unique organization named Zappos.com. Zappos is an online shoe store. They are passionately devoted to customer service. Their tagline is, we deliver happiness to the world. In fact, Tony wrote this book, Delivering Happiness, A Path to Profits, Passion and Purpose. Zappos is so unique that it impressed even Jeff Bezos. So Amazon acquired Zappos for, for $1.2 billion in 2012. But Jeff Bezos acknowledged that Zappos had a unique culture and decided that even after acquisition, they would continue as a separate brand. But what is this pizza doing on this slide? Well, pizza is the main character of the story. It so happened that Tony was once attending a conference. Along with some friends, he was staying in a hotel. One evening, they sit in the bar and come back to the hotel room at night. All of them are slightly drunk. One of the friends, Emmy, calls the room service and asks for a pizza. Room service says, ma'am, we don't deliver after 11 p.m. And just like that, Tony says, Emmy, the hotel does not deliver after 11 p.m., but we at Zappos deliver 24-7. Why don't you call Zappos? Emmy takes up the challenge. She puts the phone on the speaker and calls the Zappos customer service number. Hello, this is Dan from Zappos. How can I help you? Oh, hi, Dan. This is Emmy. I'm staying in Hotel Marriott in the Bay Area. I have a problem. Please tell me, Emmy. Okay, Dan, I want a pizza, but the room service in the hotel is closed. Can you please help me? Now, Dan is confused. He has a customer calling a shoe company and ask you, asking for a pizza. But then he activates his Zappos brain. He says, no problem, Emmy. Can you please hold on? He comes back in two minutes and says, hi, Emmy. Thanks for waiting. Here is the list of five pizza outlets near you. They are open and still delivering pizza at this time. Hope you have a good meal. Let's meet another Zappos rep, Joe. A lady named Nikki once called Joe. The conversation went like this. Hello, Joe. I watched a movie yesterday. In the movie, there was a character wearing these shoes that I really liked. Can you help me get them? Joe. Sure, Nikki. I will watch the movie and figure it out for you. Tony Shea says that this is the power of not having scripts in your call centers, the power of inspiring your employees so that they do what is right for your brand, no matter how unusual the situation. So say you call Zappos and ask Joe for a shoe that is not available on the Zappos website. Will Joe tell you that it is out of stock? No, sir. He will go on the websites of three competitors and tell you where you can find the shoes. Tony says that this way, we do lose the sale, but we are not trying to maximize every transaction. Instead, we are trying to build a lifelong relationship with each customer, one phone call at a time. That is how much Zappos people care for their customers. So those were the customer service stories, and on your screen now are the Zappos values. Please pause the video and read this slide. And just think about it. After one hour, will you remember the stories or the value slide? I bet 
you will remember these stories not for one hour or one month but for much longer so that was the third benefit stories are easy to remember before we proceed further a humble request please subscribe like and share it's a new channel friends need your help to make it work thank you coming now to the fourth benefit which is stories engage the audience by arousing curiosity now it's a proven fact that curiosity and mystery are most powerful tools for getting attention why this is what researcher george lowenstein says curiosity happens when we feel a gap in our knowledge and these gaps cause pain it's like having an itch that we need to scratch to remove the pain we must fill the knowledge gap that is why we sit patiently through even bad movies we suffer them because it is painful not to know how they end it but how do stories achieve this effect they do so by first building and thus then releasing the tension i told the story of my father's layoff in the last video i am sure you felt some tension as you heard that story the poor chap lost his job he is not financially well off what will happen to him and his family thank god he got a job opportunity i hope he passes the test oh my god he failed thank god he got the job and so on and so forth this cycle of building and releasing tension leading to a climax keeps you engaged let me tell you another story to illustrate this point the story is from netflix now netflix is known for its unique culture an important pillar of their culture is honest feedback irrespective of level the story is from the book no rules rules by reed hastings the ceo and founder of netflix the story is narrated by a director in the company named rochel this is what rochel says i was in a meeting the meeting was being led by our ceo reed and had more than 30 high ranking executives during the meeting our hr head patty mccord said something that reed did not agree with Reed got irritated with Patty and sarcastically dismissed her comment. I found that very embarrassing. I knew I had to give feedback to Reed, so I drafted an email. I read the mail 100 times because even if it is Netflix, it still felt a little risky. Finally, she sent the mail. Here is a short version of the mail that she sent. Hi Reed, I was in the meeting with you yesterday. I found your comments to Patty disrespectful i bring this up because you always talk about creating a collaborative environment an environment where people are encouraged to speak up your behavior was opposite of what you expect from us rochel read reply to rochel's mail within a few minutes how did he respond to the feedback well i'll tell you that later in the video aren't you curious about it i hope you stick to the video till you get the answer So that was the fourth benefit stories engage the audience by arousing curiosity coming to the fifth and final benefit which is stories touch our hearts how do they do that to understand that let's listen to another clip from a ted talk titled why stories are important for leaders as you listen to stories you automatically gain empathy for the storyteller The more empathy you experience, the more oxytocin is released in your brain. Oxytocin is the feel-good chemical, and the more oxytocin you have, the more trustworthy you actually view the speaker. This is why storytelling is such a critical skill for a leader because the very act of telling a story makes people trust you more. As you begin to listen to data, some different things happen. There are some misconceptions to understand. And the first is that data doesn't change our behavior emotions do so as i said in the beginning of my talk the third and perhaps the most important magic element of a speech is an idea that is what you as the speaker set out to do to transfer that idea to the hearts and minds of your audience and perhaps if the idea is good enough to change their future behavior and what does this story story do well your story builds that idea it helps the audience see something that they can no longer unsee and by doing that the story changes their future behavior forever so if you want to give the gift of an idea to your audience the stories are your best friends 
In fact, the stories are not only useful at the individual level, they have the power to change culture and behavior even at the organizational level. They have that power because great stories communicate values. Research has shown that stories are the best way to shape organizational culture because they vividly demonstrate the behaviors that are expected and the behaviors which are not acceptable. One bonus tip here, your story must have a point. It must have some connection to your subject. You can't just tell a story for its own sake. It will leave the audience confused. So you must use the story to further your speech goal and to strengthen your idea. Let's watch a clip from one of the most popular TED Talks titled Bring on the Learning Revolution. The speaker is an educator, Sir Ken Robinson. He says that the modern education system makes us feel that we must go to college, but he feels otherwise. Watch how he uses this story to make his point. I don't mean you shouldn't go to college, but not everybody needs to go, and not everybody needs to go now. Maybe they go later, not right away. I was up in San Francisco a while ago doing a book signing. Um, there was this guy buying a book. He was in his 30s, and I said, what do you do? And he said, I'm a fireman. And I said, uh, how long have you been a fireman? He said, always. I've always been a fireman. And I said, well, when did you decide? He said, as a kid. He said, actually, it was a problem for me at school, because at school, everybody wanted to be a fireman. <laughs> he said, but I wanted to be a fireman. You know, and, and he said, when I got to the senior year of school, um, my teachers didn't take it seriously. This one teacher didn't take it seriously. He said, I was throwing my life away, if that's all I chose to do with it that I should go to college, I should become a professional person, I had great potential, and I was wasting my talent to do that. And he said it was humiliating, because he said it in front of the whole class, and I really felt dreadful. But it's what I wanted. And I, as soon as I left school, I applied to the fire service, and I was accepted. And he said, you know, I was thinking about that guy recently, just a few minutes ago, when you were speaking about this teacher. He said, because six months ago, I saved his life. <laughs> he said he was in a car wreck. And I pulled him out, gave him CPR, and I saved his wife's life as well. He said, I think he thinks better of me now. <laughs> mm. Boys and girls, stories help you achieve your speech goals in five ways. You can read them on the slide. And before I forget, here is the mail that Rochelle received from her CEO, Reed Hastings. Reed wrote, Rochelle, I appreciate your feedback. Please continue to call me out if you see something that feels inappropriate to you. Read. So all those who stayed with me will agree that curiosity helps. So stay curious, stay engaged and tell stories. Because stories illuminate, inspire and entertain. Until next time, take care and be well.